Davis became the Bjorn Borg and Man United of the Green Bays. With numbing predictability, he reached his fourth World Championship final in 1985. His opponent was genial Irishman Dennis Taylor, the man with the huge specs. Well, he used to have a big pair of glasses like this, didn't he, you know? What the hell has he got on his head? The 80s was a time of outrageous spectacles. And Dennis wasn't about to be left out. OK, you can open them again. <laughs> Suddenly, Dennis Taylor's like, you know, dragging Snooker into that realms of blue in the set. There we are. We think we should have a quick look at Dennis. <laughs> There's no way you'd walk around in a pair of those unless it significantly helped you. <laughs> I'd rather miss yachts, you know, than put them on. He used to wear contact lenses, which he found irritated his eyes. So, I decided that I'll have to get glasses. I hope to God he didn't have them made for the family, because that would have been a weird outing money when they came down the hill. But those glasses made such a difference, and uh, without the spectacles, I don't think I'd ever have been world champion. Looking ridiculous, but playing amazingly, he stood shoulder to shoulder, almost with Davis. If I was going to remember anything from all the matches I've played, it would be the final with Dennis Taylor. First frame, Steve Davis to break. I remember the 85 final vividly. Steve won every frame in the first session. I wanted the floor to open up in the Crucible Theatre. Um, Steve wasn't missing a shot. We turn up, Davis does the business, we go home with a trophy, bring a low load around the back for the prize money and go home and have a beer. Got psyched up for the first couple of frames of the evening session. Steve won the first frame, 8-0. Well, a perfect performance by Steve Davis. Eight frames to nil. There I was, eight in front, looking around, lost the plot. One shot changed the whole final round. Steve took a green down the cushion and it uh, wobbled in the jaws of the pocket. If it had gone in, it was 9-0. And, uh, and I cleared the colours up to win my first frame. And then we finished the first day's play. I was only two behind at 9-7. Six frames in a row. Marvellous performance by Dennis Taylor. Steve Davis looks invincible at the start of the day. Dennis Taylor has played beautifully this evening to narrow the gap to only two frames. And the second day was a complete nightmare for me. I, I, it was survival to try and get to the finishing line. And it was destined to go all the way. So Steve Davis concedes and it's 15-14. And it's there. And the audience is thrilled as Dennis Taylor. Now one frame behind at 17.16. It was nip and tuck right to, um, right to the very last frame. And so the lights go down. The players shake hands. One of these lucky chaps will pick up the title, the trophy, and 60,000 pounds. Afterwards, someone asked, uh, how long do you think that frame lasted? I thought it was about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It was 68 minutes, the final frame. There were so many safety shots played. In general, it was total garbage. He couldn't pot a ball. I remember potting the last red and failing to get on the, the colour. I'm not sure if you can see that ring. And I have this ingrained memory of handing the rest back to John Williams, the referee. But I didn't want to let go of it because I knew I wasn't on the next ball. I needed the brown, blue, pink and black to win. And I'd made my mind up. I was just going to go for any sort of shot. I wasn't going to lose it trying to play a safety shot. And I did pot a fantastic brown. It was one of the best pots I've made under pressure. And then I remember potting quite a difficult blue. The crucible now erupting. So we just wipe down, please. And I potted quite a difficult pink as well with the white bin on the cushion. The final frame, the final black. 
and I always remember where the black was sitting because it was tight on the side cushion just above the middle pocket. What do you do with this one, Dennis? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And I remember then Dennis started to have a go at trebles. He turned the light to play the double. It goes in, I win. If it doesn't, I don't. Missed the pocket by a fraction, and I was lucky because the black went safe on the top cushion. And uh, Steve Davis played one of the best safety shots I've ever seen under pressure. He doubled the black from one end of the table to the other, missing the white by a fraction. And my next shot confused Steve because I tried to double the black from the bottom cushion into the top pocket. Hit it hard enough if it didn't go in that pocket it might fluke it in the bottom pocket missed both pockets and it went safe again and uh, really when Steve missed his next shot that gave me the first chance to be world champion and I remember just getting down a little bit and thinking I'm gonna fluke this black into this top pocket and when I seen it wasn't going in walked back had a quick glance at the table, went back and thought, it's all over. That was the biggest shot of his life. This cuts, even though it's going to be thin, I can cut it in. And I got out of my chair, and that was a bit slow motion. He said, my legs had gone, my arm couldn't hold the cue. This is my cue. Somebody's given me another cue for this shot. I have never known an atmosphere like this. I was watching it on like, a little portable TV in the snooker club. I was the only one rooting for Steve Davis to win. <laughs> I remember sitting there in the club and they'd all be going, ah, oh, miss it, Ginger, miss it, Ginger. And it was a shot that Steve Davis would knock in 999 times out of a thousand. There was no way Steve Davis was going to miss that black. I was telling my think to myself, I think, don't undercut it, because that is the, the way you bottle it. And I think probably taught myself into overcutting it. No. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. You know, it's like seeing Tiger Woods miss a two foot putt. <laughs> he walks around and sits down. So the, the white ball whizzed round the table. And I knew full well that it was going to be a, a very easy putt. But there was so much pressure on both of us at that stage that you could miss, you could miss anything. Out comes Taylor, his face like a beetroot. In fact, throughout that last frame, he was getting whiter by the shot and I was getting redder by the shot. This is really unbelievable. Every nerve in his body was literally shaking. Probably Ted Lowe was more nervous in the commentary box that, than I was out on the table. And the way I reacted afterwards was just, I couldn't believe that was me sort of stamping the cue and raising the cue and... One of them, it was cute, yeah. It was all this, wasn't it? It was all this, it was all that. Bit of that. He had a friend in the audience who's behind and he was doing the old, I told you so. Dennis Taylor, for the first time, becomes Embassy World Snooker Champion, 1985. It was just 13 years of trying to be world champion, all sort of coming out in them few seconds. He is so thrilled. I remember Steve's expression at the end of it, and David Vine, I think it, David asked him a question. Steve, it's a, a pretty tough moment, this one, isn't it? Yes. I was criticised for being miserable after that, which was quite funny as well. To me, it was a complete failure that I'd lost that match. He was just sat in the corner in his dressing room crying his eyes out. Two months then of devastation afterwards where I just couldn't get over it. It obviously was one of the biggest sporting moments. You know, everyone will remember that, even though it was 17 years ago, which is a long, long time. Probably if we had a thought that there was going to be 18 and a half to near 19 million people still watching after midnight. Maybe we might have not known what we were doing then. I mean, to get in the top ten of the 
the greatest sporting moments of all time is, is, is incredible.